Airbrushing for beginners. In today's video, we're gonna talk about equipment and the stuff that you'll need to get started. Some basic equipment and some additional stuff that you'll need to make it a little bit easier for you to finish your projects. So let's go ahead and get started. And welcome back to another video guys if you guys are new here my name is Ernie and I customize just about anything from promotional products for your business and one of gifts for family and friends so let's go ahead and continue on with this project all right and the first thing that you're gonna need is a space to airbrush so de designate an area for you to be able to, to airbrush I suggest uh, doing it outside if you have the capability of doing that if not uh, somewhere indoors uh, just make sure that it's kind of uh, sealed and tucked away from uh, you know obviously the the house or so maybe like a garage or a uh, little shed or something like that where you're able to keep uh, the majority of the overspray within that area and it doesn't overspray you know if you're doing it uh, in the uh, in the dining room or whatever it's gonna obviously go all over the place on your couches and on your uh, kitchen and stuff like that so there's an, an area for you to be able to airbrush and uh, control your overspray I have a little area uh, outside of my house it's kind of like a little porch area and I can open up all these windows if I want and I also have fans that uh, I'm able to um, exhaust all the uh, overspray and uh, all my carpeting or my flooring is solid uh, so this way I'm able to mop up um, you know eventually all the overspray that gets collected in here so that's the first thing that you need to find is a location where you are able to airbrush so there's several types of airbrushes out there and uh, the most common that you'll see is a double action airbrush which means that you are able to push down for air and then as you push down pull back for paint so air paint and as you notice, as I'm pulling back, this portion right here is pulling the needle, which is opening up the front end. The air gets sucked through the hose and siphons up the paint, and it all combines here in the tip and blows out. There are other uh, airbrushes that have the cup on the top, and the paint flows down on the bottom and through the front. In this case, I have a bottom fed or feed uh, airbrush which pulls the uh, paint from the bottom and pushes it towards the front. There are uh, other airbrushes that are not double action, which means down and back. They are just single action, which means you just push down. The air and the paint will flow at the same time. So for those airbrushes, you're not gonna have that much control as far as doing fine art or anything like that. If you're doing basic painting like uh, solid uh, colors or so solid uh, you know coats like for example on a model car or just something basic something small that you're trying to paint you know like uh, whatever it might be and it's just a single a single uh, solid coat there's not going to be no shading or anything like that then those are kind of okay but they're still a little bit difficult to control so I always suggest uh, for you to get a double action airbrush no matter if it's a bottom feed or or a top feed so this particular airbrush is the Iwata Eclipse which is kind of like your standard uh, airbrush that a lot of people use um, and it's pretty durable uh, it works I mean I've been using it for a long time um, I do have several um, Iwatas that I have been buying like I think this one's actually new and for some reason I ended up using this uh, old body and been swapping parts here and there because they get used um, for having multiple airbrushes you don't really need that unless you're doing uh, like a lot of production uh, airbrush shirts uh, you might be able to want an air one airbrush per color uh, to make your work go a little bit quicker um, I myself do several shirts um, and don't uh, really need that I just use a simple one and uh, clean my paint cups um, throughout the project 
So this particular kit comes uh, with everything that you need. Uh, it comes with the, you know, the airbrush um, and all the stuff inside. And uh, it also comes with the hose. There usually is a backing on here uh, for you to be able to uh, rest your hand. But I normally take that off because I'm always uh, uh, disassembling this, clearing out any clogging, moving this around, um, you know, readjusting this. And, um, and so that's why I keep that off. And it's also a little bit more comfortable uh, for me. Uh, this way I can move it around. Uh, so that's why I never use this uh, backing that's on here, but there is one that um, You know, it does come with that backing. Like I said, it comes with the uh, the braided hose and um, What else does it come with and I think that's pretty much it for that uh, and this normally runs between 150 maybe 175 you might want to have to you know check Amazon and uh, West uh, Or Coast Airbrush, I'm sorry um, which is actually a good place for you to go uh, get your airbrush and airbrush supplies and paints. So I'll leave a link in the description below uh, to go check out Coast Airbrush. If you're local here in uh, Orange County or in the Southern California area, uh, it's always a good idea to drive down here and check out all the stuff that they have there. Uh, if not, they also have uh, an online store that you can check out if you're from uh, the East Coast or somewhere else. So uh, with that being said, um, like I said, Double action airbrush is the the way to go, and if you can buy a kit that comes with several things, then uh, you can you know obviously make use of that. Uh, you can buy that uh, by itself. Uh, if you buy this used from someone else, um, you may need to double check that it has everything inside for you to be able to airbrush. So let's go ahead and disassemble this real quick. Um, obviously you can buy the the braided hose separately and the cups and stuff like that but if you're just buying this the airbrush by itself uh, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, the internals uh, just to make sure that you are buying something that is complete so if you're buying a used airbrush so it comes with the body you should have a body the needle holder the needle So this piece here that comes with a, a spring inside. So this is a spring holder, the spring, and then the trigger. Sometimes this uh, trigger and this piece are separate. In this case, they are kind of bonded together, but just double check that both pieces are there. You have your trigger. And on the front, you'll have a black little um, O-ring in here. You'll have your your tip. And for, in this case, if you're buying something that is used, just make sure that this is not broken or ripped open more than it should. That is uh, fairly uh, straight. It's not bent or squeezed or anything like that. Otherwise, you would have to get another one. Um, and of course the body um, this should have just be spring loaded there in the bottom we don't we don't need to disassemble that and that's your body and in here it's uh, two pieces this one and this one and if you are lucky, there's usually a little crown that uh, is uh, screwed on to this tip to protect the tip of the, uh, the needle, but it's not necessary. It doesn't do anything but protect that tip. So uh, if you want to just get started, you know, as long as it has these two items here, that and all these pieces, then you should be good to go to buy something that is used. For the most part, um, these uh, pieces will be in some other airbrushes. They may be slightly different, um, but overall it should be uh, similar to what you see here. And um, let's go ahead and assemble this real quick. Put that there. Put the needle in there. Obviously this needs a little bit of cleaning, but we'll show that in a different video. And uh, let's go ahead 
and move over to the air, the compressed air. So for the compressor, I'm using this uh, California Air Tools uh, ultra quiet and oil free compressor, which is uh, something very cool that uh, you should get. Um, I was running a previous uh, A2 silent compressor, but that one had oil um, that need to be uh, obviously needed to be refilled and eventually got uh, a little bit old and I was using different oils and stuff like that. And some of that oil was getting fed uh, through the airbrush and um, it was just giving me a lot of problems. And um, I took it into Coast Airbrush and they hooked me up with this California Air Tool uh, compressor. Um, I really like it. It's a little bit louder than the other one. The other one, the A2, did not make any noise whatsoever, but it was really expensive. It was about $400 when I first got it. This one here is about, uh, how much was this one? I think it was, uh, it was less than $200. Um, and uh, it gives me more capacity, air capacity, to be able to airbrush a little bit longer and without any stress to the compressor itself. The other one was meant for, I was told by Coast Airbrush that it was meant for fine arts and wasn't really uh, designed to do a lot of shirts and large pieces. And eventually that's what happened, you know, like uh, it worked for over like, maybe uh, 10 years without any issues, the A2, uh, but just recently started giving me uh, issues and just bought this one, which is a little bit more affordable, it's less than 200. It's actually, uh, even though it's a little bit louder than the other one, it's really quiet. Um, and I think the pumps are electrical pumps and they are not, uh, you know, regular uh, like pistons and stuff like that. Um, Everything that you see here came like this. Uh, it came with the uh, the on and off switch, uh, the regulator for the, the tank, and the regulator here uh, for your uh, outlet here. Uh, you can adjust, obviously, how much pressure you want it to come out. Uh, and of course, it has a relief valve down here uh, to release all the moisture that collects throughout your project. Um, and then uh and that's pretty much it uh, i think it did come with this uh, quick release and then i bought this uh, male quick release and of course this piece right here is the the piece that uh, is part of the hose and that usually comes with a kit if you buy an airbrush uh set um like an eclipse it does come with the uh, the hose but you can always buy shorter or longer uh hoses depending on what you need um and that's pretty much it and let's take this off here, do a quick release um, if you need to. And of course, it connects down to your airbrush down here. Let's go ahead and connect it. That's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and turn it on and see what it sounds like. All right, to turn it on, you just go ahead and switch this uh, back and it should start. And all this compressor is going to fill this tank. And uh, usually it takes about a minute to fill it up. Right now I bled and removed all the air before we started. So when you first are going to use it, the initial um, air compressed here will take about a minute, minute and a half uh, to fill up. So, and that's how quickly it, uh, it fills up. As you're using it, it's going to lower in pre uh, pressure a little bit and for it to kind of restart and fill the tank up again to a certain level, it's fairly quickly. So let's see if we can get uh, the air uh, to come out and see how long it takes for it to restart. And so all this time you could be using it to airbrushing, doing your thing, talking to customers or whatnot. 
So we're gonna do a one shot to see how long it takes to for all the air to go down and restart and to fill up again. So there are other additional stuff that you can buy like moisture traps that can go in here. Um, if you have multiple airbrushes you can hook up. And that's it. And just keep going. So it's uh, fairly quickly on, you know, adding compressed air and then you have a little bit of time, quiet time when you're out there airbrushing. So um, like I said, you can add additional like long blocks to be able to like connect maybe like five or 10 or however many uh, airbrushes you want. Um, you can do that, you know, buying different uh, blocks here. But if you're just going to start out like this, you don't, that's pretty much all you need. And that's kind of like your basic setup of uh, air and airbrush. So uh, let's go ahead and move uh, to paints and uh, and then go from there. Let me know if you guys have any questions in regards to any of this, uh, you know, beginner stuff. Um, as far as compressed air, there are other stuff out there that you can uh, that you can buy. They have smaller compressors. Um, that are tankless that don't have a tank the only issue with those is the uh, the air that comes out is not um, it's very like it's very like uh, pulsy so you get a like the air is like pulsy so you won't be able to get very nice lines if you're trying to do fine art they're gonna be a little bit like uh, like dotty I guess um, Another thing that you can buy if you're just starting out, if you don't want to, you know, purchase a compressor, they do have uh, compressed air in a in a can, believe it or not, that you can uh, attach your hose to, and then just kind of start, you know, doing the airbrush that way. Obviously, you won't be able to refill the compressed air, and you have to uh, obviously buy new cans. So. Uh, to start off and kind of play with the airbrush might be a good idea before you go ahead and invest on a uh, compressor like this. Um, but if you are, you know, getting into it and want to be more, uh, more, you know, obviously good at it and really practice and stuff like that, you're going to be needing a lot of air. So definitely get a compressor for sure. Uh, there's other airbrushes out there that don't use, um, they're kind of, I've seen them recently. They're kind of new. It almost seems like it's a airbrush and a small unit like it's like a little compressor that, that kind of fits on the bottom and it's kind of rechargeable the little battery compressor that's in like a little bottle section and you're able to use it i haven't uh, tried that uh particular product before but i'm guessing it might be kind of like the tankless compressor where you'll po probably end up getting uh, pulses in your your spray so if you're doing something like makeup or you're just painting like a model in a solid color uh, might be okay to use that if you're you know using an airbrush like here and there and very rarely there's no need to buy a big compressor but uh, if you already have a compressor because you you know are doing other stuff like you know you have air tools or you you're all constantly painting like furniture or something like that then obviously use this uh, compressed air. It'll give you a better uh, a better air fine line and uh, will obviously uh, make it more. How uh, they say it'll make you make it uh, like enjoyable to be able to uh, airbrush. So, all right, that's gonna be it for the compressed air. Let's go ahead and move on to paints. All right, so for paints, uh, pretty much all you need to get started is obviously black and white. So I would probably recommend for you to get these large um, the bo uh, bottles, which is uh, 16 ounces uh, of black and white. Uh, this will allow you to obviously practice and uh, do basic black and white shirts. Um, and this uh, this way you don't spend that much money. Uh, the brand that I use is Kratex. Uh, specifically for um, airbrushing 
and uh, I would recommend uh, buying these. They have a uh, different uh, lines. This one's a, a Wicked White. This is the regular Kratex color. Um, I started off, the majority of the people start off with just a regular Kratex color. They do have opaque and a transparent uh, paint. I would probably recommend you uh, for you to get the opaque ones to start off and then play around with the uh, translucent ones. So um, definitely black and white is what you need. Uh, after that, uh, if you want to continue getting more colors, I probably recommend for you to get your basic colors, your blue, your, um, you know, your, let's use this one, your yellow, and uh, your red. So, so with these colors, you're able to kind of create other colors, you know, your greens, your purples, uh, and stuff like that. Uh, you can come in here and make some more variety of different shades uh, so this is a good way to get started um, without having to invest in additional colors so with time and stuff like that you'll eventually start collecting other colors that you want to want to use you know you'll have I like using these uh, fluorescent uh, colors like these purples it makes for a very nice and bright uh, shirt and I use these for my graffiti stuff, like these uh, fluorescent colors, this green one, this orange one. So if you want to make something bright, these are kind of cool. Um, obviously, you can make fluorescent with these colors, so you want to go ahead and get those. Um, as far as additional colors, like they do sell, like if you're doing a lot of portraits, you, you, they do sell like uh, skin color uh like skin colors this one doesn't have a label but you know like your your browns your peaches um, sometimes what I do is make my own so you know I'll mix a, a little bit of yellow white and like maybe like this peach and a little bit of brown just to make this uh, lighter skin color which I like to start off with all my portraits and uh, I also make this one this one's a little bit more of a pinkish color and this one I use for like blushes and lips and just kind of like a little reddish um, you know tint to the skin so you can buy empty bottles and start customizing your own uh, colors um, again this is additional stuff that you can start off with uh, making your own colors um, they do sell a variety of different bottle sizes obviously bigger ones there's even a bigger size than this. They have big tubs that you can buy. Um, obviously they have smaller ones. And they have these uh, specialty uh, bottles uh, with, uh, with the, what do you want to call it? The siphon feed here that you can use if you're doing a lot of coloring. So in my case, we use um, the little cups that come with the uh, airbrush let me go ahead and show you that these are the cups that I use um, on a daily basis They're just enough to be able to put any of these colors in here and then I'm able to put that on there and airbrush all my stuff so I have um, about five or six of these little cups where I'm able to use different colors on each cup um, you are able to uh, buy these little cups that are a bigger size and then put different colors in these cups and obviously you'll have a, a big range of of colors when you're airbrushing but I always have issues with this not only because there's a lot of paint in here um, I normally don't use that much paint on one project or anything like that. This is great if you're doing like if you're going to an event and doing uh, airbrushing and you want to have like quick colors to be able to pick from. This is a great way to do it. Uh, for me, um, you know, there's a little hole in here that needs to be open all the time. Uh, air eventually gets in there and starts drying out the paint in there. 
So if you're not using this constantly, it's gonna eventually dry on you. So the way I kind of fix that problem is I use some uh, toothpicks and be able to plug that in and um, save my paint that it's in there for uh, a little bit longer and stuff like that. But even even with this particular color, when I use it, I open it up and dump it in here. Um, I just you know it takes a lot of uh, a lot of pressure sometimes for for the the air to like siphon up paint especially if it's kind of thick in there and it's been sitting there for a while also when you're trying to first starting out and try to mix from here you have to put your finger on here and mix and of course that of course that makes a little bit of mess um, and stuff like that so th I mean these are kind of depending on what you're using them your your airbrushing um, you depending on what your airbrushing uh, will determine on if you need these or not but for me I like using these little cups um, because I get to use like for example if I'm doing a portrait you know I'll use this paint first and then I'll rinse it with water real quick I'll dump this in there I don't need to wash it and then I'll go into the darker brown continue and then I got a, a super darker one in here and continue using this same cup without having to I kind of rinse it but don't really wash it th thoroughly because I'm going from light to dark they're in the same family so it kind of helps me uh, move quicker through my my paint colors and I'm able to also if I want to um, mix colors while it's on the airbrush so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and Let's say I'm doing a little bit of yellow and I want it to be a little bit of a brownish and I'll add a little bit of brown on here to make it a little bit tan. I have myself some popsicle sticks that I use all the time and I mix my paint. I also, if I want it to be it for it to be a little bit watered down, I spray a little bit of water using my squeeze bottles in there real quick mix it I can also add additional stuff like this Autoborn sealer which makes the paint more durable and of course mixing 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 and that's why I like these little cups because I'm able to do different things if I'm gonna go from this to a straight white I can always take this off Dump the paint that's in here. Rinse the feeder. Then I'll take my bigger bottle that has all my, it has a little bit of uh, awesome cleaner from the Dollar Tree with water. And then I'll use this to run and clean all the inside here. After that, I can utilize a second cup. I usually put a little bit more water in here, run that through. This way I get the whole system cleared out with the previous color. And then I'll go ahead and dump in my my uh, my white. So especially when you're changing colors um, that are not in the same family, that's usually my process of uh, doing that. So I'll clean all the stuff out and uh, rinse the water making sure everything goes through and then uh, once i kind of spray a little bit of whatever is left over on the side of my table here and uh, that's kind of the, the area that i use to kind of test things out uh, if i see that it, the airbrush is completely clear then i'll go ahead and introduce my my second color so that's the way i, I change colors uh, using this particular cup uh, this particular cup i think if you buy the setup it comes with, like I said, with the uh, um, the hose here, and it'll come with a little cup. I usually buy additional cups, and um, sometimes you're able to use the cup from a different brand airbrush. So they may be a little bit slightly different, but you are able to do that. So I, I've done that myself. I think this is from a different brand. If you notice, the ring around it is different, and I think these are from a different brand. But they still fit in here if for whatever reason you find out that your uh, that your cup is a little too loose uh, you'll have to figure out a way to 
broaden this here and just kind of stretch it out a little bit I use a big nail with a hammer and that's just enough for it to open up a little bit and uh, you know fit in here so this doesn't fall out while you're airbrushing and that's pretty much uh, everything that you need to know about airbrushing I mean um, like I said there is other airbrushes where it comes with a cup that goes on the top you can probably see that I've seen that before and there's other ones that are side where it's fed through the side here of the airbrushes so they all have different um, the, you know different applications they're more for finer uh, fine art and also if you're trying to do low pressure with more paint then you might want to get one that's a uh, side fed or the one that's uh, gravity fit or yeah is it gravity fit yeah like this so the only problem with with this one is that your your the cup is securely welded onto the body of the airbrush and you will have a hard time trying to change colors uh, quickly so you know you have to literally like unplug this and maybe wash it and I use um, I use q-tips to go in here and clean while I'm trying to change color if I'm going to be using the same cup um, but uh, th this is why I like the bottom fed here because I can always take this out change it up put it and change it or if I need to I can uh, use one of these bottles put it up here and it's very versatile as far as uh, painting uh, whereas the other one that's you know on the top here um, it'll be kind of difficult for you to do that so this is why I recommend this particular model if you're starting to airbrush so it's the Iwata Eclipse and I think they have different ones you know but this is the bottom one uh, BCS so HP BCS So now that we have kind of like the basic idea of what makes an airbrush and how it works and the kind of like the basic stuff that you'll need to get started, um, let's go ahead and talk about cleanup. Um, obviously, as you're working through your project, you want to be able to clean out the cup and the airbrush. Um, so some of the stuff that I have that I use is I use a squeeze bottle to be able to squeeze water in there. I have my... Um, you know con swap to be able to clean the edges of paint while I'm siphoning out all the stuff let's go ahead and use this other one here so I'm clearing out whatever paint is in there and I'm cleaning at the same time and then I'll usually do two rounds of that see like that has a little bit of residue paint but once you clear that out, you can use the other side. Like I said, do two rounds. 
and be ready to change color or if you're done you can uh, um, you know put it away or whatnot so I have water on one and then I have uh, awesome like I said Dollar Tree works pretty good I hardly ever use it unless I have some sort of like hard clog in the airbrush I'll go ahead and use that for the most part it's always water because you know I don't want to be breathing that stuff so water's always good um, also when you are done airbrushing um, obviously you want to disassemble the whole thing and clean it you can rinse it through um, the sink and I have these brushes that you can use to clean in there and inside the uh, the airbrush and uh, you can get different sizes um, these work really nice um, what else uh, obviously you can buy like actual airbrush cleaner I, I mean I, I had this I don't know where I actually got it but um, as you can see it's brand new I don't really use it um, I just like using the water if anything this awesome uh, once I take everything apart and disassemble it, uh, disassemble it I use a jewelry cleaner and dump everything in there and I just allow it to cycle a few times let me go ahead and show you what that looks like so this is an old jewelry cleaner ionic cleaner or sonic cleaner whatever they call it uh, it just you know vibrates and it's able to clean all the stuff uh, right away um, so obviously get yourself something that's separate from your um, wife's jewelry this way you don't screw it up especially if you're using harsh chemicals like thinner and stuff like that if you are using enamel paints uh, the paints that I have are water based so it's really no big deal but I like to disassemble my airbrush entirely all the stuff that's in here and the trigger and the, the, the cap and stuff like that and dump all the stuff in here my cups plug it in and just leave it there and cycle through um, and it's really good to be able to clean all your stuff at the end I just rinse everything dry everything uh, and then before I disassemble it um, I use uh, you can use a little bit of oil if you like I've gone a little bit further and I've I actually used grease automotive grease um, here that I've had in my garage and this actually works really good uh, and last a little bit longer so I don't know I like you I mean technically you, you don't need to use this you know like I've never really seen anybody actually like use automotive grease on an airbrush so it's not really necessary I like to use it um, makes my life a little bit easier this the airbrush is a little bit smoother because um, later in time you know things start getting old and you know metal on metal they start getting stuck in there and you don't want that trigger to get stuck while you're working on a piece of art and you go and push the air all that paint is just gonna blow onto your work and it's gonna be a pain in the butt because you have to either clean up or paint over it and that definitely sucks so uh, obviously like having rags I have a lot of rags here um, that I use I use one main rag uh, to paint I'll go ahead and uh, show you like most of these rags are either to clean around the, the shop or airbrushing all right so as far as cleaning as well and changing colors and stuff like that you're gonna need a place to dump all of that extra paint um, a lot of people use um, like something similar to this where there's a hole in there and you're able to push all the air all your airbrush in there all your paint and eventually that's going to get filled up it's a little bit bigger the one that they use um, there's obviously uh, other videos that you can take a look at and see how to make uh, make your own you know DIY there's um, there's people that actually like take uh, like a coca-cola bottle and cut it open use it as a funnel and have a tube going all the way down to a bigger bottle where they dump all their um, their extra paint and stuff like that so uh, you can do that for myself I just use the trash can um, I just go in here and uh, if I change color let me go ahead and grab a 
thing here. I'm airbrushing. I'm painting. And I'm done painting. I'll you know come in clean and I'll just dump all my my extra paint in there. Obviously you're gonna get a little bit more fumes uh, than you normally would, but you know you can always shoot it to the side to get less uh, fumes. Like like I said, when you're using um, when you're trying to you know change color and try to see if the color didn't change or if it's too watery or whatever, like I use the side of my table here. Like every time I I, I paint, I use this as a, like a uh, I don't know, like a test panel, I guess you can say. It's a quick way for me to do it. Um, you can use a piece of cardboard or whatever that you have there. Um, I use this when there's white in here and I'm trying to clear out, you know, like a previous color and it's making my white like blue or whatever. Like I'm still putting white in there. Like that extra initial white uh, paint, I'll just throw it on here and cover what's already on here. So it'll give me another slate for me to work on. Uh, I mean, it works for me. It's obviously not uh, very nice looking, but uh, it definitely works. Um, when I'm done changing this, I clear this out like this. And then I'll use my uh, bottle that has my cleaner. And then I'll try to clear out everything that's in there. Once I'm done, obviously you'll have extra liquid and I always have a rag next to it so I can clean the bottom here clean the tip and I'm ready to shoot um, and also there's you know there you always get paint on your hands there's always paint everywhere paint on the cup so I use this rag that's always on the side for me to do a quick wipe. And um, you can see this is this is pretty old and it's covered in a lot of paint. So that's a, a good thing to have. Uh, and of course you wanna be able to hold your airbrush somehow, some way. So I use these uh, little holders and I just screw that onto my table itself. There's another one right here, but I don't really use that one. And uh, put that there do whatever I need to do and then come back pick it up and continue painting all right and now for um, painting garments um, some of the stuff that I use is this I made this recently and it's pretty much a whole bunch of uh, pieces of foam board uh, glued together and then what I did is I cut it off with with a saw and sanded it together and what I use this for is to put on helmets and hats and this allows me a good base to be able to to do that and I can rotate the stuff um, and also can probably help for if you're doing masks and stuff like that so you just need something you know to hold those items so this is kind of what I use to do that so for uh, t-shirts I'll just show you what I use so for shirts I uh, I use these Kind of like wooden panels um, that you can buy from Amazon or uh, like I said you can go to Coast Airbrush and they sell these. Uh, there's different sizes for small, medium and large shirts and that's kind of what I use. Um, and uh, there we go. They have these holes so you can put your finger in it and you can move it around. I also use a lot of clips. So once I go ahead and put the shirt on, I'll use clips to kind of stretch the shirt even more. Uh, this way I have a nice canvas to work uh, with. And I have several butterfly clips and just regular, you know, clips that you can get from the store um, that I use. So it's always good to have all these clips uh, because it'll, help you stretch that uh, shirt out and have a nice canvas to work from so uh, on top of that um, I have a variety of different shapes I guess you can say so like when it comes to sleeves I've made myself a little little template right here um, 
I don't really know. I think that's like a quarter inch uh, piece of uh, uh, wood, and uh, it has a little slight angle, so I can use it for sleeves. I have something similar that's really big, and that gets used if I'm like painting uh, jeans or pants or sweatpants or anything like that stick those in one of the legs and airbrush it use the clips to stretch it around Let's see. Uh, I have uh, this panel here that has a curved top and this allows me to paint uh, face masks um, they're called uh, like ski masks I guess you can say um, beanies, I can use this one uh, for smaller items like tank tops or kits, uh, shirts. I'll have something small like this, and uh, you can pretty much just make your own. You know, just make sure it's a quarter inch and kind of sketch it out, cut it out with the with the saw or whatever you have. Uh, that should be good. Uh, for these particular shirt. Uh, I guess panels you can make your own um, in sizes and like for this particular panels like they'll last a long time um, these are fairly new that I cut from older pieces these two right here um, as you can see compared to this one here that has a lot of paint and work already on it um, this one is probably over 10 years old um, and uh, it'll still do the job um, the only thing is obviously with the the moisture of the paint you know it's a uh, they start kind of uh, coming apart um, there and on the bottom here's coming coming apart so maybe in the future this one needs to get replaced and I'll just take this over another panel trace it out and cut it out and it'll last me another 10 years um, so for something like this, brand new, if you were to buy it, you may be looking at uh, 30 to $40 per um, backing here that you can buy online. You may be able to get it cheaper. If you're good with your hands and have some tools, you can find the sizes that are uh, designated for each size of the shirt and cut it out yourself. So as we continue with this video, uh, just a, a reminder that the only things that, that you need to get uh, to get started with airbrushing is obviously the airbrush, the hose, um, the container to you know have the paint in, and some sort of compressed air, uh, black and white paints, and that's pretty much all you need to get started. Obviously, with uh, time passing, you can continue collecting more advanced equipment and uh, additional paints and stuff like that. So. Uh, other than that everything that i'm showing you extra is just stuff that i use on a daily basis you don't have to have it but it's good to have uh, just as a reminder so let's continue on uh, as far as setting your shirts after you're done painting them um, i use um, a heat gun like this one so i bought that at harbor freight i forgot how much it was um, but uh, you can also use a hair dryer to quickly dry your stuff as you're uh, painting your project um, if you're doing airbrushing on shirts um, after you're done airbrushing normally what I do is I set the uh, the paint so I'll use a regular iron uh, over the, the the you know the project this way the acrylic kind of melts onto and sticks really good onto the fabric if you are going to use a iron like this to set your paint you have to for sure get one of these this is uh, made out of teflon uh, and it's normally used to do um, heat press on shirts and uh, this will allow the paint to stay on, on on the you know the shirt and not to melt onto the iron because if it does melt on here you're just going to smear the melted acrylic all over the place and you're going to have to throw that away and start fresh so make sure you use a Teflon sheet sandwich in between your shirt and you can set your paint and move it and 
to another section and stuff like that. So that's kind of what I use. Some people have a large uh, heat press and I'll show you what I have. I normally don't use my heat press to set my airbrush shirts because uh, I normally airbrush on the entire front of the, uh, the shirt and um, you know, I don't do like 50, 30 shirts a day for me to have that heat press on all the time. So uh, I'll, I'll maybe use like, I'll maybe do like one shirt or two shirts at the most a day. So for me, I like to use the iron. And this is the uh, press that I have. I use this cover uh, to kind of protect it from the dust. I also use this area to spray my glue onto my stencils that I'll be using for shirts. So this is uh, it's kind of like a throwaway, you know, canvas material. Um, so I'll have that there. And this is what I use. I think it's like 15 inches or so. It's not very big, but I use it to do like, you know, basic shirts and stuff like that. And I don't use it necessarily for airbrushing, but you could have something like that or like this that's a little bit bigger. Uh, if you're gonna do like simple designs that are kind of just like chest uh, size and you're not doing the entire shirt like I am, uh, then this would probably definitely work because you can, uh, you know, press it down and iron it real quickly. So if you're doing multiple shirts, this is a great way to, to do it and, and do it really quick. So in addition to, you know, some of the basic stuff that you'll need to airbrush, um, I like to have a variety of uh, different uh, tapes uh, to help me out. I use a vinyl tape for like shoes and collars of shirts. Um, you know, a variety of masking tapes, whatever brand you decide to, to get. Um, I have some ducking tape for other uses, um, not necessarily for airbrushing. Um, I also have double-sided tape, again, for other uses. Um, I have uh, transfer tape that I use for my vinyl decals when I do uh, stickers and signs. Um, this actually can double up as stencil material because uh, it's fairly uh, clear and you can kind of draw on it, um, but you can use it as a big masking um, you know, piece of tape if you're trying to cover something. So that always helps out. If you're trying to mask something that doesn't involve like cutting and stuff like that, you can use this, which obviously is a little hard to see, but it'll still definitely work. And uh, we also have uh, stenciling. So as far as stenciling goes, I make my own, I make my own stencils. And I have uh, this sheets, this sheet here. Uh, I forgot what kind of material it is. It's uh, but this particular one is 7.5 mil. Uh, there's 12 sheets in here, and it's fairly thick. Um, you can cut these out by hand, or you can use uh, something like this. So you can use something like this. It's like a vinyl cutter, and it's like a 24-inch uh, vinyl cutter. Um, here's a stencil material that I use, Frisket, as well, and uh, that really helps out. Or you can use regular vinyl material um, as uh, stenciling as well. Um, you can use a Cricut if you have a Cricut, uh, but I'm making larger signs and stuff like that sometimes, so. You know, that's what I use. Obviously, like I mentioned in the previous video, there's a lot of overspray and everything gets uh, dirty. So um, other than that, uh, let me see what else we use for airbrushing. So, oh, here's one thing. So going back to the uh, paint situation, um, most of the paints are pretty good and they'll last a long time. But sometimes you'll have paints that are super old or let's say you bought them used, used bottles from someone else. Um, and sometimes like some of the, the paint, you know, if you're using it, like it's dry up here and some of that stuff like ends up inside the, the bottle and then shoots through the airbrush and then you get like little splatters of paint or it clogs your airbrush and stuff like that. So if you're, if you see that your paint is starting to get old 
and there's a lot of clogs in it you may want to buy uh, some filtering cones like this one uh, elite paint system this one uh, I bought at Coast Airbrush again this is the most coarse mesh available these are mainly used for automotive uh, painting uh, but I use them once in a while to kind of like uh, you know refresh my paints I guess you, I dumped this in here and then I dumped that new freshly filter paint onto a brand new bottle and this way I'm guaranteed that there's no like you know clogs or you know dry paints in there especially when I'm doing flat surfaces like uh, helmets or plastics and stuff like that for my uh, custom controllers I don't want like blobs of paint on there so I gotta make sure I use this uh, this way it looks nice and clean so uh, let's see what else we have for you guys so as far as lung protection um, I have a random like variety of masks and that's due to the fact that we had that situation happen a couple years ago so uh, I have the regular KN95 masks I have these like black regular masks and um, I have this one that I got uh, for Christmas and uh, it's like a more comfortable one and it has like a filter inside that you can use um, as far as this uh, it's really up to you whatever you're gonna use um, you know I do a lot of airbrushing so yeah you know when I shower I do get uh, some blobs of pain coming out of my my nostrils so definitely try to use a mask that you're comfortable with um, this one's really comfortable but you know it's like less filtering uh, this one's more filtering but again it's the comfort level especially if you're going to be airbrushing for a long period of time and or you are in a uh, very hot place and you're kind of feeling suffocate you know suffocated uh, by your mask and stuff like that so just uh you know as far as masks you just pick your own and and go from there if you're outside you may be okay without using a uh, mask but it's always recommended no matter what you do to always wear you know mask and stuff like that for gloves i don't use them because this is a uh, water-based paint it's non-toxic so it's not gonna hurt anything so you're okay there so uh yeah it should be fine so like i said this is just extra stuff that i just happen to have and i use it here and there it's not necessarily something that you need but you know like cutting utensils for cutting your stencils you know i have this old needle from an old airbrush and i use this to clean the, the tip of the airbrush which is this little piece here so again, this little piece right here so i have an old needle and i like to go in there and clean it this this one in itself is old and i'm not using it but uh, you can see it's very clogged and i use this to unclog something like that um, obviously more fine to cut my portrait stencils um, tweezers you'll never know when you need them and you can also use this to clean this item here just stick one of those in there turn this around and you can clean that in there so just be careful not to screw up that tip and there's just some random stuff I have like this thing right here it used to be like a uh, what do you call it like a file but it's bent so I can grab it and if I have old paint or dry paint I can go in here and just kind of scrape it off I don't know just random stuff that I have so it's really up to you uh, what you what you have and what you need so other than that that's pretty much it I mean you know like I said just the basic stuff air airbrush a little bit of paint and you should be good to go to get started and you can start collecting uh, more tools and, and better equipment as you go along as far as practicing you can use an old shirt you can use um, uh, paper towels you can use uh, old canvases and reuse them repaint them uh, you can use uh, just regular pieces of cardboard if you're just practicing your uh, your daggers and stuff like that um, we're gonna do another video later on showing all the uh, troubleshooting uh, that you need to know for like unclogging an airbrush and I'll do that in a separate video um, but uh, you can just get creative you know as long as you're able to paint it you can buy like you know cardboard 
uh, from the Dollar Tree and use that. Um, there is a specialty, like kind of like felt material, like white felt sheets that you can buy, uh, that you can play with. Uh, but you don't need to buy all that stuff, you know, if, like I said, if you have like a piece of cardboard and you want to practice on that, uh, definitely do that. This way you save yourself a little bit of money. Um, what else? And that's pretty much it. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Uh, I'm going to do, like I said, another video of showing you troubleshooting and clogging and, and stuff like that. Uh, this way you guys can have uh, an overview of how to uh, d clear your airbrush and, and not get frustrated. So. Uh, please leave a comment or a question down in the comments below. This way I can answer those. And uh, yeah, I'm trying to look, huh, I'm trying to look around the studio and see if there's anything that I missed that I want to show you guys. Uh, but it doesn't seem like it. If it is, I'll go ahead and put it in a separate video down in the future. Uh, obviously, you want to have like, you know, old clothing that you're using. You want to have like shoes that are meant for you to paint like i have these boots that i there are my dailies they're pretty pretty bad looking but you know like that's the reason why you have this because there's so much paint happening you can take a look at my floor it's all over the place i mean it's not it's not a clean but it's not a clean tool but you know it looks really nice and like any other painting studio that you will have paint all over the place so that's really not a big deal. All right, and there you go, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and were able to learn a little bit about how to get started with the airbrush and some of the stuff that you'll need uh, to do so. So don't get discouraged. It is gonna be a learning curve and it's gonna take you a little bit of time. Uh, even after you know how to airbrush and are pretty fair using it, you'll find that it's a little bit of frustrating uh, in regards to like cleanup and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, uh, it does make it a little bit quicker to finish your projects. Uh, it makes for a very nice uh, finish and uh, you know, I like airbrushing. Uh, I like how it looks on cars, on uh, shirts, you know, you can do it to uh, paint uh, projects and crafts and uh, model cars and stuff like that. So that's always fun and of course you can do fine art as well. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys on the next one. Take it easy for now. Bye bye.